The amazingly successful Apollo 9 mission lasted 241 hours and 53 seconds. Indicating just how successful the mission was is this fact. The splashdown today came just 10 seconds later than originally planned. Details now from ABC science editor Jules Bergman. Just after 12 noon Eastern time, Apollo 9 descended out of the clouds on all three main chutes and splashed down barely three miles away from the recovery vessel, the helicopter carrier Guadalcanal. The ship had steamed all night after the splashdown area was moved to avoid stormy seas. The sunny skies, light winds, and calm seas hardly prepared the astronauts for what happened next. As Rusty Schweiker transferred from one life raft to another, helicopter downwash flipped the raft into the air, and Schweiker barely missed taking his first bath in 10 days. The chopper pilots were having their problems controlling the rescue cages used to sling the astronauts up to the recovery helicopters. Dave Scott had already been dunked in the Atlantic, then taken a swaying ride up to the helicopter. All this a mere 100 yards away from the carrier. And now it was Schweikert's turn. After failing to catch the cage several times, Schweikert, aided by Navy frogmen, finally made it. And it was a new kind of flying, even for our astronauts. The cage first dipped him into the Atlantic briefly, then he began a man on the flying trapeze journey through the air to the helicopter. After their 10 days in orbit, they'll spend their first night back on Earth aboard the Guadalcanal. Then be taken by chopper tomorrow to Eleuthera Island in the Bahamas to get aboard a space agency plane for the flight back to Houston. 11 days of intensive debriefing await them. At Mission Control in Houston, bone-weary controllers were jubilant as they watched the landing on live TV. And as the choppers sat down on the Guadalcanal's deck, the red carpet had been rolled out. Below decks, a 350-pound cake awaited the astronauts after 10 days on freeze-dried space food. Spacecraft Commander Jim McDivitt was first out of the chopper. Command Module Pilot Dave Scott, who got the worst dunking, had pulled off his dripping socks. And McDivitt had this greeting for the Guadalcanal's crew. We've had a real good time, and I hope we uh, accomplish something worthwhile. Uh, the whole space program is made up of just thousands of people. We're just a very small part of it. And you guys are really a number one for us. Thanks to everybody who's helped. Swaying on their feet after their 10 days of weightlessness, the three astronauts headed down the deck for a quick physical, a shower and a shave, and a good night's sleep before beginning their trip back to Houston. Next, Apollo 10 on May 17th, an eight-day flight, with a lunar bug orbiting the moon for 60 hours, sweeping down as low as nine miles. Despite some who've called for speeding up, the space agency feels a second manned LEM flight is vital before committing our astronauts to a lunar landing. This is Jules Bergman reporting. If Apollo 10 is successful, these astronauts and the space agency then will literally shoot for the moon. The Apollo 11 mission, scheduled for July 15th, has as its objective the landing of men on the moon. Apollo 9 astronauts McDivitt, Scott, and Schweikert stopped over at Cape Kennedy today on their way home to Houston and a reunion with their families. At the Cape, where their space flight began, the astronauts were welcomed by workers who are already preparing Apollo 10 for a moon orbit. President Nixon's personal... The space agency today released some more spectacular film shot by the Apollo 9 astronauts during their 10-day Earth orbital mission. As the film starts, Spider, the lunar landing vehicle, after a moment's trouble, is seen undocking from the command module. The view is from the command module. Okay, you're free. I'm free? Gosh. What did you do? Oh, I went back to the old memory of the, the cycle on the switch, and you look like you're free. Okay, great. from the other direction, showing how the command module looked from inside the LEM. You can decide for yourself who's upside down.
Atomic Command module has re-entered the Earth's atmosphere and the drogue chute opens to break its fall toward the Atlantic. Now the three main chutes open, as seen by the astronauts lying on their backs looking up. CBS News special report, A View from Apollo 9, will be broadcast later tonight over many of these stations. David? The space agency has released some color film of the most complicated maneuver ever made in space. During the Apollo 9 flight, the moon landing ship separated from the command ship and operated on its own for more than six hours before they were rejoined. The separation took place on the fifth day of the 10-day flight. The moment of separation is shown in this film taken by astronaut David Scott in the command spacecraft. Astronauts McDivitt and Schweikert were in the moon landing craft. After separation, Scott fired the command ship's thrusters to draw away from the moon landing ship. Later, McDivitt fired the descent engine and pulled away from the command ship. This is a picture of the command ship taken from the moon landing ship. By firing the lunar landing ship's descent engine at various stages, McDivitt and Schweikert eventually reached a point 113 miles away from the command ship. In this film, the four legs on the lunar ship are in the position they would be in for an actual landing on the moon. Eventually, the moon landing ship returned to the command ship and completed a successful docking. The purpose of it was to show that astronauts could rejoin the command ship after landing on the moon in the lunar ship. 